that are dressed in sheep suits in his eyes, but are dangerous foxes once they get out of his office or his face. You must not, Mr. President, trust them. Movie number four. On behalf of all Gabba's entrepreneurs, and taking in mind the COVID climate, where economy has gone down, we want to appeal to the Minister of Homeland Security and Minister of Transport to stop impounding motorcycles and release all motorcycles gathering dust in various police stations in our country. I will emphasize clearly here, the globe as we know it is faced by the turmoil of economic meltdown. Everywhere in the world, prices are going up because of COVID-19. And the life is going to be tough, particularly in poor countries like Malawi, if we don't think. Therefore, we appeal that government should give incentive to informal sector. Informal sector, which belongs, these Kabaza people belong to that. And those vendors that are selling each other everywhere, do not put control on them because the economy of Malawi will, will only boost through the informal sector. The formal sector today will not work because COVID-19 has changed them. But the informal sector, it will still move because they need to survive. Today, banks will not give money to people for loans because they say, we are in COVID-19, we want to trespass, check the economy well before we release loans. But the informal sector will not wait for that. Therefore, if Malawi is to develop, we need to improve and promote informal sector during this pandemic of COVID. Therefore, we appeal. Motorcycles were, ma were made to move. If you pile them in police stations, they are gathering dust. And you know what? They are creating f f mechanical faults. Because they are meant to travel. They are meant to be driven. They are meant to be raided. Now, if they are not ridden up, they are developing rust, which will give this informal circuit another headache after they release them from your stations to fix them mechanically. We appeal, release them and give them a grace period. Give them time so that they can register their cars, do insurance and get helmets and whatever. But don't hold them. Movie number five. Government officials are the ones leading in selling land in Malawi to Indians and the other foreigners. Next time we are going to give you one a prominent person in the government who has bought land in, in Tulumpi and in Zimba using the name that he was part and parcel of the officials of government. From these informal people that have got no voice. We appeal again that government must issue a statement that land should not be sold until land audit is done. Thereafter, there should be a land board or land commission that will now think on how land can be sold. But in our movie, we don't believe in selling land, you can lease them out. Because we have generations that are coming. If all land is sold, where are our great-great-grandchildren going to be? They will be buying back from Indians, from foreigners. There, we are not thinking tomorrow. Movie number six, seven. Area 36 Lilongwe and Balaka are hot spots where citizens are fighting the police because of the lampage the police is doing to impound cabas, motorbikes, motorcycles, and lack of licenses with some informal business sector that are selling without proper documentation or what I don't understand. The same story we are talking about that this is a ticking bomb. Once citizens start fighting with the police, you must know that it's a ticking bomb. Sooner or later it will explode, and if it explodes, it will involve everyone. So there will be lawlessness in the country. We need to think seriously about this. Movie number eight. Malawi must probe insurance companies and find out the daylight, daylight robbery they are cheating motorists in our country. Car insurance companies in Malawi, they are making money each and every day, but they don't give back to the people this morning. In my life, I've known Hogg Robinson was an insurance company. Before they ran away, they stole from Malawians. They did not pay. 
The worst part or example is foreign cars that get, come in Malawi to visit, they are forced to pay insurance even if they are staying for three days, two weeks or a month. When these cars go back, this money remains in the government. We want to know, is it the government that is taking this money or in the, uh, individual companies? And why are they stealing? Because this is daylight robbery. Insurance is meant to compensate people. They are insuring their property in case something happens, they're going to give it back, be given back. But I'll tell you this, insurance companies don't give back the money to where they, they take from the motorists. Therefore, we want the government to intervene and find out where is the money of insurance going. If it's government getting it, then they need to find a way to give back to the people. Movie number nine. Passport applications in South Africa is done in a very strange way where one is questioning, is this a government system or a lobby or I don't know what to say. It's a ruffian system. Malawians living in South Africa are asked to go and apply at the embassy or consulate in Johannesburg. Then they are asked to ask a relative in Malawi to go and pay for this passport at immigration in Blanca. And some officials take advantage, telling people that now you're going to give me the money, I've got a wife in Malawi, I've got a brother in Malawi who will take that money and, and, and pay for you. Is this system of government? Are we trying to keep corruption or we are promoting corruption? Because as I speak to you, over 10 people have lost their money after one of the boys that was working at the gate of the embassy stole all the money and then these people come back and say that boy was chased out from work. Malawians have lost their money. What type of system is that somebody applies in South Africa and the payment must be done in Blanta? What about the people in the northern region, central region? Far south in Sanje, should they come to Blanta to pay them for passport? Why don't they pay at the embassy in South Africa? This is promoting corruption and is promoting cheating the people. This system must change. Malawians must pay at the embassy, and the embassy must find means to transport or co connect or transfer this money to Malawi. Malawians are paying money to the embassy for COVID certificates. They are paying Malawi to the embassy to get the travel document. Why shouldn't they pay for the passport? Something is wrong. Government must fall and check on this. Minister of Homeland Security and Department of Immigration, check what is going on here. We want to know. The last movie, movie number nine. We have put a campaign national campaign, let me say internationally, because nobody wants corruption in, our, in the world. But in our case, we have said there should be hashtag name and shame campaign. We are urging, urging all of you Malawians that each and everyone must join this campaign. On Facebook, on radio, on TV, wherever you are, in the bar, remember hashtag shame, I mean name and shame. That is the only way we are going to stop corruption. And it must focus much in the police, immigration, MRA, Department of Traffic, in the ministers, because Indians are forced by ministers, give us 50 million or else, or else what? Or else what? Indians have been in Malawi ever since time immemorial. And now if they don't give 50 million, else what? Our dogs are watching. Members of parliament, councillors and traditional leaders, village headmen, traditional authority, paramount chiefs, you are involved in corruption. But for this corruption to end, we must all gather together in this campaign. Hashtag name and shape. Name and shape. And I want to say something here. This corruption we are talking about is two-way. It's not one-way traffic, it's two-way. We Malawians are the ones that are promoting corruption. Because whenever we need something, we go to the officer and tell him that, listen, officer, I'll give you 20,000. I want my passport tomorrow. That is corruption. So we are asking you, police officers, traffic officers, high court judge, immigration officers, MRI officers, traditional leaders, when you see a citizen coming with that mentality, 
copy them, tap them, take their picture, name and shape. Because corruption is a two way. We shouldn't fix it one way. We must finish it up two ways. So, government, churches, non government organization, citizens, let's fight, let's join us in this hashtag name and shape so that our country so that our country must stop corruption i want to say something here and this i'm addressing the president 100 percent of whatever we correct whether it's from donors whether it's from taxes whether it's from loans 80 percent goes somewhere Somewhere in a ship, we call it a smuggler's hold. There is a hole in a ship where they keep people that doesn't have papers or those that are being smuggled or they smuggle this illegal trade. Cocaine and whatever. Malawi has got the same. And there is a group of people, Zinghani, now that we are talking about. They make sure that 80% of our revenue, of our taxes, go in that smuggler's hold. That is why this country is not moving. Now, we of Mover Shulungamu, look at me, I'm getting old. Sooner or later, I will leave this world. There will be no Mover Shulungamu. Even though our children will take over, but the pace will be different. Therefore, I beg you, I request and appeal to you all that let us stop corruption. Let us seal this hall of smugglers' hole. So that 100% of whatever government takes should be used for school, for education, for hospitals, for roads and other infrastructures. Energy inclusive. Because I saw the president going to commission 19 megawatts and the whole country was awash with news. 19 megawatts. 19 megawatts. I'm born to Sandra Zuma, commander in chief of Mubajulamabu. Have a great day. Let's meet again next Tuesday, next week. You are all great people, Malawians. Thank you very much.